Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome. I, I can see some familiar faces. That makes me feel very good. Portugal and from Holland and from other places and from Ibiza, I can see. So let me start off by saying a big thank you to Michael Healy for extending the invitation to me to join the Global Unit Conference. Um, and thank you to Unit Ventures as well. Uh, I also want to thank Rachel Ciandela for introducing me to all of this and being such a supporter of me um, in education. So uh, my name is David Swain. I'm the founder of Parent Ed, which is a new platform which provides mental and emotional wellness for parents. And today um, I'll be taking on this mantle of talking about technology and our emotional development. Um, my point of view is all about the emotional development. And I was listening to the, the fellow who just went before me. I was so impressed with uh, his, his tech talks, but that's not me. So let me explain to you a little bit about me. So I'm a learning specialist and an educational consultant. I've worked with children of all ages uh, with all kinds of learning profiles, um, their, their parents, their families, their teachers, their schools, in public and private sectors throughout the United States and Europe in a career that now has spanned 40 years. And although I closed the office to my door, my, uh, my door to my office last June, um, I couldn't be more uh, excited or more inspired to continue. So when Rachel and I last year were talking about um, emotional development technology, she said, you've got to come on and talk to somebody. And I said, great, get me on. And so she did. So thank you, Rachel. So let me tell you um, today what I think the, the uh, most important area to focus on, because I think being able to address technology to a, to a larger population is spectacular. And if we can do it related to emotional development, boy, I'm all for it. Right now, um, having seen the changes in families and parents and schools over the last 40 years, I can tell you that the, the group that is most, um, most in need right now are parents. Parents are suffering a level of anxiety that has never existed before. Um, I can get into talking how schools have changed and how the workforce has changed, but you know a lot of that. So let me just uh, run by some of the statistics that I've been looking at um, in the work that I do every day on this, um, on the parent ed uh, platform that I'm doing. Today, 78% of all parents do not understand. Hello? Got a big feedback. 78% of parents. Are you getting feedback, Susie? Can you see? Is there feedback going on? A little bit. Okay, let me just read, the, I just have a few of these. Maybe it's, it's allergic to percentages. It doesn't, doesn't wanna to listen to it, but 78% 70, of parents do not understand child development. 78%, 73% of parents say that they would like to do better, but they don't know what to do in the moment. And 86% of parents say that they feel judged by other parents around them. Now this tells you that parents are in need right now. And it doesn't just affect the parents, of course, it affects their children. And in my work with children, I've seen this as well. In the short term, children who are, are living in uh, high anxiety households demonstrate difficulties in learning, demonstrate behavioral problems, and in severe cases, um, physical illness. My concern of working with families for such a long time is that I see that those patterns of parenting, um, one, one more percentage, 90% of us um, copy some or all of our parenting styles from our parents when we're kids. So, so living in a high anxiety uh, household children pick up those patterns of behavior and when they become parents they are uh, they they use those without thinking and carry on that kind of tradition of anxiety so today when we are suffering from this crisis this pandemic 
the situation uh, causes uh, uncertainty and that causes uh, triggers, our emotional triggers to be set off. And this is where parents' fears can easily become overwhelmed. And then their reactions dominate their decisions, making, uh, making it an impossible situation to parent in a calm and responding, responding way. So here's the solution, hooked in with technology. Of course, I'm a teacher, I always have a solution. And so here it is. The manner in which we think about anything, the manner in which we think about parenting our children directly affects how you respond to doing that or how you react to doing that. If you are living in a, in a, in a, a tense and an anxiety-ridden uh, fear base, you react. And so the first step to removing anxiety is to address the emotion of fear which is where it comes from. Because decisions made from fear are always reactive. And so when Rachel and I were talking about putting this talk together, I said, well, this is one of the things that I really wanna talk about is how, um, how reacting uh, rather than responding is going to uh, be the, is the hardest thing to try to correct. So um, how, do you how do you respond to that? Well. You would find someone like me, a trusted teacher, a counselor, someone who could come in and help uh, with the family situation. But because I'm just one person, because I'm retired, <laughs> um, and because I'm giving this talk on technology, I think that technology has to step up and reach a broader audience and help parents be able to find those opportunities in the crisis. So I thought we would look at just three um, easy examples that we're all experiencing today uh, as an example of how technology might be able to be used uh, in these very important situations. So first, the pandemic. It's a crisis. None of us are equipped to deal with change. Change and human beings, for some reason, we don't educate ourselves in this very well. So we, re we, re we react um, rather than respond and learn to grow. If we think about it, if you think about how we respond, what would be another way to look? The pandemic has actually hit the pause button for almost all of us. Now, if we can look at it from that perspective by reframing it, it means that it's providing us the time and the space to think rather than to react. Here, technology could be a help. I think technology could really help by creating programs that teach parents, and then in conjunction with their parents, their children, how to think in a manner that allows you to recognize and manage your own emotions. It's time humans really took control of their emotions. They're just chemical reactions. They're not who you are. So this is a very important time, I think, and, it, <laughs> and I'm happy I'm out of retirement and back working because this is the kind of thing that I think we can really make a huge change on. Let's look at another example from this time we're living in, which is confinement. As a teacher, as an instructor who has worked with so many different kinds of children, I'm so very careful about the language I use, confinement, is a word that carries such emotional weight. When you think of imprisonment and criminals and bars, and it's, very, it's a scary thing for kids, certainly. That sets off those chemicals that are related to the fear reaction. So what's important here would be technology could help us um, by helping to reframe the idea of how do you see confinement as another opportunity? When was the last time you had space and time that was free, that was not going to be interrupted? Not very often. And although after two or three months, we're kind of two and a half months, we're thinking, oh, well, we're ready for it to end. When you, when you have that set up and you're with your family, it gives you the how to move forward, the process to move forward, to see it as, as a, a reframed situation. And finally, let's look at the thing that's probably bothering people the most in confinement is, are those changes in your family dynamic? 
that when you were spending six hours a day was fine, but when you're spending all day, that it, it has, you have to make adjustments. So being together for weeks on end causes this strain, but it can also be a time of family renewal time. And here's the technology part. What if technology uh, was able to plan um, each person's schedule in the house? And I don't just mean the hourly schedule. I mean that it was able to know that what you really like to do in the morning is draw, and then you like to have your coffee, and then you like to be around people, and then you would like to do some concentrated work, and then that sort of thing. So that everyone um, has their skills, their likes, their interests taken into consideration, as well as the shared and overlapping family time for resolution, problem resolution, and, and fun time as well. In this way, technology is the planner, and it takes the parent out of that, and so parents don't have to be the enforcer. Suddenly, parents have, have the opportunity to do the best job parents do, which is the one they always want to do, which is to, to give their child the absolutely best they possibly can. Over the 40 years I've worked with parents, there has not been one who has not wanted that. There's not been one who knew how to do that all the time. So if technology it can help, I'm completely there. Um, my job will always go on, whether it's this or that. So I know that technology has down, downsides. I'm not an expert in it, but I know it has privacy issues. It has screen issues, screen addiction issues that I know about. The one I know the most is, the, is ESS, which is electronic screen syndrome from overstimulation of the nervous system. These are things that we do have to think about, but also the incredible potential. If we can, if we can build a program to, to do this, um, if there is such a thing as ethical AI, um, these programs can build community for parents, for kids, uh, for all kinds of, of interest groups. One of the areas I'm most interested in, most excited about, would be um, programs that can monitor, monitor individual child's growth. And I'm not talking about child's growth as, as based on competitive national examination standards to see if they're up to, up to snuff, but to, to be able to follow on an individual ba basis, um, the advancement that your child is making in their own interests, in their own talents, in their own enjoyments. If it actually has a digital genome, if it's able to actually focus in on that, I don't know. And so if there are tech people listening, um, uh, let me know, contact me and, and I would love to talk about it. Because that really returns us to what I'm interested in, which is an education that's based in teaching the how, the process of thinking, project-oriented, phenomenal-based learning. So that is the talk that I want to give to you tonight. I want to thank you for this opportunity and um, to talk about the development of the emotional side of technology and emotional development and let you know that I'm so excited about the possibilities of moving forward. I do believe that technology just may be the element to help us deliver this kind of true and lasting change for all of us. And so that's very exciting for me. And um, I'm thanking you for joining me. And I don't know if we open this up now to questions or comments or whatever, but I can see the happy faces there. It's great to see you all. <laughs> So, do you have questions, Sorry. concerns? So I'm, so I'm hearing this something. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hello. Yeah, I'm getting some feedback. Okay, Jody, I can see you in, in Portugal, I guess, or France, are you in France? 
I can't hear you right now. I don't know why I'm trying to demute you or maybe you're, how do we strike a balance with kids? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I'm trying to demute you, but I, I don't know how. How do we strike a balance with kids and screens? Oh, good. I just saw a question. How do we strike a balance with kids and screen time? Well, uh, that's a great that's a great question. Of course, it depends it depends on your kid, and it depends on you. Um, the idea is to uh, is to set reasonable limits and see if they work. Is to set down um, that the computer is a, is a tool, um, so that it's not to be used during uh, you know social time. Although of course there is some crossover, but I think that it's very important to look. At to look at it um, at that and to in include obviously your child um, in that conversation because uh, because it is a tool and we're all using it now. But yes, I do believe in in limitations for it. Absolutely. I think Jody is off mute now. I don't know. Are you? Oh, I, can you hear? Yes. Can oh, hear? okay, great. I just wanted to say one of the things that spoke to me in this pandemic time is that the technology seems to be the tool, but as time goes on, you really see the human need. What, what I see my learning at home son needs is really that contact with us to contextualize what he's encountering, um, whether it's, you know, subject or discussion. Um, and it's that sort of listening and exchange, and then those connections that he makes foster that growth that you're talking about, that process of thinking. Yeah, what a great point that is. I couldn't agree more. And if I can hook that into Susie's question about um, the screen time, exactly that. I think before and after uh, what Jody just said about helping, helping your son uh, contextualize, it's such an important element i know that i'm i'm not out of a job uh, because that kind of process yeah. is the most important one and the fear of the fear of uh, of all of these things of consignment a confinement of being um of being uh, contained and not having other contact to, to help that contextualization i think is is essential so if you can always or try to check after those those sessions and say so you know get into that habit what did you learn what do you want to talk about well, you know how can i help this is what i think i always think that's that's a wonderful thing yeah good really great point <laughs> really great point good well i know i have somebody waiting from california to get on <laughs> that was kind of fun <laughs> that was kind of fun um i can see people from Miami and yeah, okay. Oh, well, it's great to see you. So this is part of our new, our new um, uh, project, which we're very excited about. Hi, Dave. There we go. Hello. Hi, so you I'm sorry. I'm actually getting my blood drawn right now, but I wanted to say hello, and you're fabulous. Okay, thank you. You just sent that out to everybody listening. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> It's good. So, um, let's see, you can get a hold of me uh, at Parent Ed on um, Facebook, I believe. Is that correct? I'm uh, looking Instagram. at And Instagram. So at Parent Ed on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you, have, you have my other emails, which I know you can get a hold of me, but that's the way to get the parent. So we're very excited about this and hard at work and um yeah and really looking forward to the whole thing right. so yeah yeah exciting very exciting so anyway thank you so much i'm going to get off so farid can get on but it's great to see you thank you for doing this and when we when we have others i'll definitely let you know thank great you. to see you i i hope the the pandemic is is treating you well and that you are able to um, be together with your loved ones and, and all of that.